Hello, as you can see, I have been receiving a lot of packages this week. These were all the components for a portable solar generator build. This is a project that I really enjoyed when I was building my van. I enjoyed putting in the solar, wiring everything up. Um, it was a really good learning experience, and so now I want to build a portable setup that I can take camping um, when I go in the truck on the weekends, or just to have if the power goes out and not have to have a noisy generator. So this is like the system I built in my van. Uh, it's a, just a little bit beefier. Um, I'm using lithium batteries this time, as well as a larger 2,000 watt inverter and more solar panels, so up to 400 watts. So let's uh, go ahead and take a look at some of the components, some of the tools that I'll be using, and get started on this build. All right, so some of the tools I'll be needing are uh, gonna be my voltmeter, gonna need to measure and tape, uh, different tapes, some, some of these um, nice little twist ties for attaching the cables to the board. Um, regular tools, my saw to cut the wood, um, drills, uh, different battery powered tools that I've got. Um, some of these crimp connectors. Uh, since I'm going into a plastic tote, I've got a crimper. Um, see how these are going to work. Rivets, excuse me. Uh, different adhesives, drill bits. This is actually really cool. It's for creating different wires. You put it in and can mash these together. Um, since I don't have a lot of different tools for this, I'm kind of using some other methods that I've worked in the past. This is to cut some holes, glue gun, crimper, some Velcro to stick things there against the wall, and some handles. Uh, also, I've got some accessory cables, 12, uh, 22 gauge cable. Uh, I ordered some more, but I've got all of these from past jobs that I've done, all miscellaneous screws, some fuse holders, but let's take a look at the components that I picked up. So to begin, I've got a nice 1280 watt, um, 100 amp hour lithium battery. Uh, this thing was a really good deal, I had good reviews. It's really light, as you can see, <sighs> compared to one of some of these AGM batteries. So I'm really stoked to get into that. Uh, this is the tote I got, 50 bucks at Home Depot. So it's got wheels, pretty sturdy, really good handle on it. Uh, this is to bolt the battery down. I've got a trickle charger. I've got my fans for inlet air. I got some SAE connectors that I can just put on the outside here to plug the solar panels in when I'm ready. I've got my fuse block that I can ground um, to and create uh, some access points for these 12 volt accessories like this little light that I want to mount. I've got a uh, inlet for being able to put shore power with this uh, trickle charger here so I can just plug it in and have it ready to go anytime that uh, I don't have it connected to solar it'll just be charging on the wall. I got a nice uh, switch here that I want to mount. It's got 12 volt socket as well as um, uh, it will give me a readout and a USB here. So that's actually pretty cool. It's hard to find one with that. This is the 2000 watt sign inverter, pure sign inverter that I'm going to throw in here. Uh, my MPPT solar charge controller. This is a really good deal on this. Uh, these are the miscellaneous fuses that I need for the solar panels, inline fuses. I've got a 50 amp for the 40 amp solar charger, 175 amp for the battery, different breakers here, and for connecting multiple uh, solar panels, I've got these splitters here that'll let me do in series when I get a second solar panel, and then some 10 gauge wire and 4 gauge. So this 4 gauge should be enough since I'm not going to be running long distances of wire. This should work for hooking up the inverter to the battery, the battery to the solar charge controller. Everything else, uh, the solar panels would be to the charge controller with the 10 gauge, a little bit smaller. And then uh, just the 12 gauge, uh, 20, 20 gauge roughly for any of the 12 volt accessories. So let's see how I'm going to get that all to, to fit in this box, huh?
All right, after careful deliberation, I finally found a good organization um, for all the different components to fit perfectly. So first of all, I'm going to cut out a sheet of this wood to create a top layer that fits perfectly on these little edges here. And on the underside of that, I'm going to mount some of my components, the charge controller, the fuses, fuse blocks, uh, breakers, um, and have all the wires neatly attached to this underside um, so that when I lift it, um, you'll have all the wires, everything exposed, but on the top side will be just real nice and clean. So it'll be mounted so that it'll fit flush and uh, charge controller here so it, it'll take up this empty gap that's available here for it. And on the top side, we're going to have it be just completely clear and I'll mount this uh, remote meter for the charge controller save this uh, 12 volt light here so it'll be just real clean real simple on the top so first of all the battery is going to be bolted down so it won't move right here I'll have the fuse attached to there and all the cables run into it this front side where the handle is is going to be kind of the the powerhouse all the incoming power will be here this is going to be the plug for the outlet of uh, shore power which is connected to the triple charger which will charge the battery uh, from any 12 volt uh, from any AC outlet extension cord as well as the solar plug here and um, it's going to be mounted against the, the side right here um, on the side panel just like this one just nice spot that it'll fit right in there and so the solar uh, panels can be plugged in from the outside and it's got these nice weatherproof outlets, um, covers on them. And so this will be connected right into the charge controller directly, so a real short cable. These are a lifesaver, finding these online, not having to you know, splice these and do them myself. Um, next would be the inverter. Uh, the inverter is going to be connected to the battery, all the um, fuses and everything will be connected here. And then I'll have this nice handy dandy covered uh, 125 volt um, typical power outlet for all your microwaves, televisions, um, everything. I just wanted one just so if you wanted to put more you can always put an extension uh, cord a power strip or something on there but this one should be enough for most projects and it's got a nice weatherproof cover and it goes directly into the inverter. And I plan to mount this bad boy right here above the tire, uh, the wheel. It's a nice spot for it right here. Just be able to access it right there on um, through the inside there. And uh, that brings me to the front, which is kind of the, the power out house, you know. Um, it's going to be able to mount um, all the accessories that are going to give power out. So this uh, socket here will be mounted right there, uh, giving you... AC, um, AC power from the DC supply when you press the switch on for the power inverter which I'm going to mount just right down here flush with the the plastic of the tote and just above it I'm going to put this switch and 12 volt outlet cigarette lighter and the USB plugs and what I liked about this one is that it's got a voltmeter as well in the window here. You can actually see, you know, how much power is available in the battery. So it'll say 12.4 and it'll just count down because it's a lithium power pack. You can actually run it down almost to zero since, you know, I had an AGM before and you can only run those halfway. I had two batteries that equaled 100 amp hours. This time I got one that's lithium 100 amp hours, so you can actually deplete it all the way and it won't damage the battery or how long it'll last which with this battery is going to last you know they say anywhere from 3500 to 5000 discharges that's you know 10 years of use if you're discharging it completely every day a lot more if you're not so these are built to last so this will be established right here in the front looking real nice and flush and then uh yeah it'll be pretty waterproof. I'm not saying it's going to be 100% waterproof because um, I will have this fan um, that will be mounted back here, a 12 volt fan that will be connected to this switch here. Um, 
I'll also have the light connected to the switch and maybe I'll put my refrigerator directly into this one if I want to ever put a, another external outlet to it, another 12 volt. But um, yeah, this fan's got a nice little grate on it. So it's kind of dust proof a little bit, it helps to catch some of the debris. But I'll put a little vent on this side so that this will just be an outlet to pull out all the hot air that might be coming out of the inverter and um, have some fresh air get drawn in through just the suction of this one, sucking the air out. So that's the way that everything's going to be mounted. Yeah, it'll be pretty weatherproof and uh, be able to provide all the power that I need. Um, time I'm out and about in the outdoors so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this wood and start mounting some of my components let's do it I went ahead and got started without all of y'all so here it is this is gonna be the top decker with my remote meter for the solar charge controller to see all my digital information about how much kilowatts are being charged and battery life. This is the external light with the switch here. It kind of telescopes just as an emergency light. Saw a really cool design from another guy and pretty much copied it. So it was kind of a lot better. Everything fit really good. So I got these lids here. This kind of here. It just flips up. It actually holds in place on the handles. And so here I'm gonna be able to wire everything. So I got the battery bolted down with a piece of wood under with some washer. And then uh, my solar, the inverter here, it'll let me put my plug. It fits really well with the top deck. I'm gonna go ahead and get everything wired up next and get it all plugged in. Get all my sockets put in. And get all these installed. And that should be the end of it, but for tonight, I'm all set, and we're going to go ahead and call it a night. Alright, here's everything wired, at least all the main components. I still gotta do my 12 volts. This is kind of my kill switch that I got, so if I just turn it on, it completes the circuit. And we are charging here off of the inverter. Let's see if I can look at what my control panel reads. So, I've got, it's a full battery. Um, it's been completely charged, 12.9. Next step, let me get the DC all wired up and get it finished up. I'm not sure which way is blowing outward, so I'm just going to test this here and see. Okay, so it has to be facing this way oh. so that when it's turned on, it'll blow outwards. I got the power to the fan hooked up over here to this switch. Let's throw the switch. Fan is on and it's blowing air out. Good strong current, so it'll be able to suck in over on this vent right here. So, this is it. I just need to put in the components the trickle charger, uh, hook up these miscellaneous uh, plugs for the outlet. Um, yeah, it's all set. I even got 
the light and power here. It's all done. I'm just covering all the exposed contact points so when I open and close the lid, I don't have to worry about anything bumping another one and short circuiting the whole thing and causing any problems. Hmm. I have to clean this up. Here's the finished product, all done in a nice husky case.